Everybody, Josh Mason from the Indy 11 front offices, and once again, quarantine in his basement. But now without a good friend in mind, I'm sitting with Mr. Colin Falvey, the hero of the 2016 playoff game against FC Edmonton, which will be featuring on WNDY this uh, week at 4 p.m. on Sunday. Please do tune in. Colin, welcome to our little chat today. If you could take us back to 2016 against FC Edmonton, what, is, what sticks out about that game and what are the things that you remember? Uh, first of all, thanks for having us on here. Always good to see see your uh, ugly mug. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure about the word hero there. I think you had, uh, I think you had a phenomenal group of lads that you know, it wasn't just one individual. And I'm not just saying that um, because anyone that's ever seen Edmonton play, I mean, you're in for a scrap. So. Uh, one or two people pulling their weight on 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 a night against that outfit um, isn't going to be enough. So, um, yeah, the, the biggest thing that sticks in my mind it was just uh, the boys, every one of them, um, rolling up their sleeves and, and and embracing the fight. You know what I mean? And it was like people getting uh, people get knocked down, tackles flying in, long balls to deal with, uh, people blocking, people making saves. Um, you know all all them things. So from a collective point, it was it was impressive um, how we dealt with it. A um, couple of the memories um, from the game itself as well. Uh, obviously, the winner. I mean, that's worthy of winning any football game. Cracking finish from from Sini, um, and he'll be the first one to tell us that he he promised promised us something like that all year. So. Um, it was nice to fly. Uh, to be honest, we needed a goal like that. I think the night it, the night that was in it, it was going to take something like that to win it. I think uh, Big Van Ockel made some some big stops, and that he uh, did. And and Sini had to put one right in the top bin for us to to get over the line. And then um, and then the scenes obviously that led to everyone coming <laughs> rushing onto the field. Um, and they're and, and, and celebrating. Um, so the things that stick with me. Good. It's a good experience for you overall. But I said a couple of things about the game in particular that made you kind of a cult hero in some ways is that beautiful head wrap you were able to take mid game. Um, speak a little bit about that, about the moment itself, uh, the wrap and getting back on the pitch. Um, I mean, it's just one of them things. It just got, got, got uh, cut open for a ball and um we just we were struggling to to get the blood to stop and uh Brian uh Garlic um who was our trainer at the time he uh, he he done a fantastic job to somehow um keep me out there um um and yeah it was i think <laughs> funny part about it i actually think we ran out of uh i think we ran out of game shorts um because <laughs> obviously, obviously, one of the rules now is you know, any any speck of blood on on the, on the jersey, you've got to take, you've got to switch. So, um, I rem I remember JD, the equipment guy, was was uh, having to quickly to run to one of the the uh, the tents that were selling jerseys and grab grab an indie shirt with no name or number on the back. I'm sure we got fined for that, but I don't care. I don't think we cared about that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, after, I didn't even, I forgot about that. Or didn't, maybe I didn't even realize at the time there was no name or number or anything, but it wasn't until I seen a photo of the game afterwards that I realized uh, how many shots we went through. But um, yeah, it was fine. I was lucky enough that it wasn't one of them concussion ones. Uh, it was just a clean open cut. And um, yeah, we just had trouble stopping it. But um, yeah, it was, it is what it is. It was it, it definitely... Um, Definitely uh, one that I'll remember, I guess, because of it. Yeah, and I'll tell you, it's because, obviously an iconic moment for Indy 11 fans uh, across the across the state. Uh, I'll put up a couple graphics of things, uh, the poster and, and, a, and a caricature of you uh, in a beautiful head wrap. So what made that 2016 team kind of gel? I said, I know we spoke to Eamon last week, but kind of curious as to what being to, to your point uh, from previous conversations, a lot of USL and NESL contracts at the time, one or two years, how does team come together so quickly and make such a run for the championship? You know, I've been on a lot. I've been on a lot of teams inside a lot of locker rooms. Um, 
more clubs than Jack Nicholas, I guess. But <laughs> um, it was funny. It was one of them things right from the off. We went to that. We went to Arizona for preseason, and um, the boys and Tim done a good job of building a good, good, good group of lads like that. Were there wasn't even much effort have to put into it. Um, I think. I think they go in the start. There was a little bit of maybe, um, I wouldn't say conflict, but it was a little bit. A lot of new guys in, old guys, you know, places up for grabs and stuff like that. And I actually think that side of it helped us because it just um, brought us close together. It was right from the off. It was competitive, um, and then as as people got to know each other, um, I mean, every day at at Grand Park at the training facility, um, there was something going on. Whether it was um, me pretending, me pretending that I knew everything about the Pacers, and I was tell, telling Daniel Keller what the Pacers should do. But <laughs> in, my, in my head, I'm just laughing, and it's just all banter to me. Like, and he's getting so worked up because I'm telling him someone can't can't shoot the ball or whatever it may be, and um, you know, someone's given Bushy stick about his his long pants or whatever it may be. It was just always it was. Uh, Eamon, Eamon, as you know, it's, is uh, people are quick to give him sticks, so but he he drags a lot of it upon himself. So I think you just, I, th I think you just had a lot of, um, I think you had a lot of big, different type of characters within the locker room, and I think they all brought something unique. And um, I think we, uh, as teammates, we quickly found out which buttons you could press and not press between uh, with each uh, individual. And it was quite funny that, um, you know, we gang up a team up and uh, Nicky Patterson always conniving and up to something. So, um, and then, and then, you know what helps that the most Josh is, uh, is a couple of results. Um, because if you get that in the beginning with any group of lads, um, and things start going wrong or the football side of it, it, it can change the mood very quickly because people's jobs are on the line and, and, and yeah. positions up, you know. So I think, you know, as the results start to come in and we were, we, um, we started to see that we had a chance of success that went hand in hand then with um, us being able to become a very close knit group and uh, that just grew day by day. And, uh, definitely, definitely up there in the top two or three uh, that year up there in the top two or three locker rooms that I was involved in. And speaking of which, I said, there's, you played for a lot of clubs around the world. And I said, it's a great article about your career right now on USL Championships website. So if you're uh, out there, please log into USL Championship. Take a look at the great uh, uh, article written about Colin and his entire career. But you've been in a lot of locker rooms and playing on a lot of teams. What sets India apart culturally and from your soccer experience? What makes it different than other places you've played across the world? Um, I think there's a few things. I think for first of all, I think um, I think Indy. I think Indy is a massive, massive sports city. I think uh, I think I think I think I quickly. We I think a lot of the new guys quickly realized that. Um, you know, I th I think over here people when I first came to the states. I knew people loved the game and I knew um, people were interested in it and, and fans um, where a lot of places in the US are, right? Nearly at mo now mo most places. Um, but I still think there are certain areas of the country where they're very, very, uh, very, very dedicated to their teams and very, very uh, much in tune with what's going on. And, um, and Indy was kind of my first experience of that in the US. Where in Europe, like in Europe, if you've had a bad result in a, if you're playing on a certain team in, in a certain city, you don't you don't come out of your apartment on Monday, Tuesday because the result is still that fresh in the community. Um, and I thought that was never really a thing over here in the US. I, I didn't think. I, I just kind of had in my head that it's more of a, an in, you know fans just in you know, just go out for the day out and it's just a bit of fun and a bit of enjoyment as where it's um, much, much more in Europe. It's people breed, live live football like nonstop. So I think Indy gave me a little bit of that 
same feeling. Like I remember example, I was going to, uh, I can't remember. I, th I think, I think it was the first game of the season. Actually, I think we, we tied one, one with Ottawa and, um, I went to the grocery store the next day just to get some, some groceries for the week. And, um, and, and, and the guy said to me, he said, Hey, um, the guy who was doing the, the, he was doing the bags at the end of the th thing. And he was like, um, Oh, did you play? I said, were you the guy playing that? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I play with Indy that. And he's like, um, he's like, yeah. And he starts talking about the game quite intelligently and, 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 um, how much, you know, he was like, he made it clear that like, we need to win this year. Like we, we need a big year. We've been, uh, we've been behind a lot of teams over the last three, four years. And I remember that sticking with me by going, I've been places in the U S and it's kind of like, you know, someone would say to you, Oh, you got beat last night, better luck next week. And, and that was it. You just move on. He was quite clearly like <laughs> thinking about it in a nice way making the point that, we, you know, draws at home isn't good enough. And uh, I thought that... It's a way of telling you we expect better things. Yes, and I, I thought it was... <laughs> for, me, for me, coming from Europe, I thought it was very refreshing. And I said to myself, I said, okay, um, I like that. I like that the fans are so engaged because I keep... I think it keeps the players engaged and it keeps us on our toes. And if, definitely then, if we ever do win a game, if, if we ever do win something or win a game of football on a Saturday night, it kind of feels more, um, kind of feels like that you're, 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 you're doing your job basically. So it's yeah, there's been a lot, a lot of elevation since then, obviously, since you played in 2016, now looking at where we are now, granted, we hope to get back to playing here in 2020, but I think the expectations only have grown year over year. Uh, and I'm glad we both find our way both into the USL championship together, which works even better for both of us. Um, what do you miss about Indy? What are the things I know? I said, I know how much you have an affinity for the city, uh, both personally and professionally, but what are the things you really miss about Indy, the things that uh, you kind of taken with you? Um, things I miss. Um, I think, the, I think I settled in there quite so well because it is a good, a good size city, but it's, I still got a little bit of a, kind of small town feel to it, right? So uh, just the ability to have like little interactions with the people that are doing their daily jobs in, in, in whatever area the city you're living or community you're in. Um, I miss that. Um, I think unbelievable uh, restaurants there. Are, I mean, you could, you, I could name off loads that um, I definitely miss and uh, I'm making sure I'm not forgetting to next time I'm back in town to revisit some of them. Um, some good breweries. Uh, being an Irishman, I think I think that was a, a big plus on our on our day off. It was nice to go check check a few of them out. Um, um, I just think I, I wouldn't just say it was the city. Uh, to be honest, I think it was it was more so how. I was treated, and I think the team was treated. Why people have such fond memories of it, um, and I really do think it was a hell of a ride that year. And I do think, I do think that we were all kind of in it together. It was it felt like that anyway? From a, from as a player, that's what it felt like. It kind of felt like we're all in this together. Like Indianapolis isn't kind of supposed to win a national championship against the likes of teams from New York and Miami and all these places. So. Kind of felt um, nearly like it was us, us against um, a lot of negative voices from the outside, you know. And I kind of, I think the players embraced that, and the kind of fans kind of knew that the players went to that as well. So um, I wouldn't go as far much as saying that it was a bunch, bunch of thugs, um, but we were definitely a group that um, were going to get after you, get get in your face, and um, and and it worked. Yeah, it ne nearly worked, but uh, it did work because, um, in my opinion, uh, it's the, the only trophy the club has won, and I think that's the benchmark. I think yep. everyone at the club there now, I'm sure, and all the fans, they're, they're, they 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 want another one, whatever that may be. Um, and that's where you play. That's where you play sport. You want to win titles, and that was a, we managed to achieve to get a piece of silverware to the club, and then 
as I said, we were unlucky to fall short on, on penalty kicks. I mean, it's a lottery when it comes to that stage. Um, <laughs> we, long, we got a long way to go. I said, I hope we get back to playing more than anything else for all of our sakes. I said, obviously, uh, being in our homes and, and getting guys back on the pitch would be good for everybody. So uh, I just want to thank you for your time. Thank you for your service here in Indy. You know you're very much appreciated. And on behalf of Mr. Colin Felby, number 32 in your program, number one in your hearts, and Josh Mason, for the <laughs> uh, we want to thank you for your time. Again, reminder, WNDY, 4 o'clock this Sunday. Make sure you go watch Colin get his head wrapped and uh, have himself hurt in a very unique way. So with that, Josh Mason, Colin, thank you very much. Tune in next time. Thanks for having us.